Welcome to Hunker Down with Seth, the number one uh, podcast according to My Mom Network News. So we have a wonderful, amazing, stunning, talented, just the total package guest you have tonight. Uh, check out his Instagram, and it's Titus Ricard. Titus, good to talk to you, man. Great catching up. How are you? <laughs> I'm great, man. Let me let everyone know he only said those things about me because they're true. So, uh, I'm not arguing. Man, I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, you, you could look all around my place. I have no adjectives written about Titus anywhere. I spoke from the heart. <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah. So how are you keeping sane? How are you uh, hunkering down? Man, well, truth be told, uh, I happen to have a set of keys to a uh, little studio gym that I worked at for like two days a week two hours each oh, wow. so uh i go there every morning and i get it in oh, I got nice. dumbbells i got a bench i got a trx i got treadmills and salt bike medicine balls i got it i got all of it to myself <laughs> oh wow and yeah i know you're like a fitness guy um do you also do watch any have any like nutrition tips or workout tips for all the listeners out there yeah uh refined sugar is the devil. I don't care what you believe in. <laughs> Fat is not the enemy. It's refined sugar. Cut that out your diet. You'll see a difference in two weeks Two weeks minimum. All right. Refined sugar. Yeah, the thing I, for me, though, is refined sugar tastes so good. Well, yeah. I mean, it has the same effects on your brain as cocaine. Yeah. So, And that's been, that's been proven. So, of course. Oh, wait, I meant cocaine, not refined sugar. That's my bad. <laughs> I, no, then again, I don't know how much validity there is in that because if it has the same effect on your brain as cocaine, how come, I, you know, I don't, I, I mean, personally, I don't know anyone out there sucking dick for honey buns. No. You know, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know if I could say that or not. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't put any restrictions on you. You're good. You know, I, I put okay. restrictions on me. I'm not going to say anything detrimental to anybody, but you, you go ahead and say what you want. <laughs> All right. You know, I just thought of this. Um, it might be weird because cocaine or the cocoa leaf and the sugar uh, plant, whatever that is, they sort of grow in the same climate. Maybe that's why it has the same effect on our, on our uh, body, just because... You know, they're both grown in really hot weather, you know. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. It could, you know. Can I, can I put my black conspiracy theorist but, button on that? Yeah, go ahead. Um, by the way, I do want to just throw it out there, everybody. Titus is black, so it's not like he's just throw. I'm not, I can't put any black conspiracy theories, but Titus, he, he could do as many as he wants. I got none. Well, if you think about it, sugar and cocaine have the same effect on the brain. Same effect. Grown in the same climate. Cocaine, sugar cane. Think about it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the end of... See, I'm going to learn you, though. I'm going to learn you, Seth. I'm going to learn you. Oh, well, I, I'm going to take this further. Cocaine... Sugar cane, Big Daddy cane. Oh, ain't no past that, man. Okay, okay. But he's from New York, so I don't think the climate has to do anything with him. Perhaps. Hmm. Huh? <laughs> I know that. That is that <laughs> does get my uh, conspiracy theory mind going. Just uh, how cli how things grown in the same climate uh, sort of have the same effect. Because I grew up in Wisconsin, so it's like they say cheese has the same effect on your body as like alcohol. Sort of like it clicks the same things in your brain. So, and what's Wisconsin famous for? Beer, cheese. So. Yeah, but I've never I've never fucked the fat girl for cheese. Well, because of the effects of cheese, right? That's, I've never done that. I did it on my own sheer will. You know, it definitely wasn't because of the cheese. 
Well, if you spend any time in Wisconsin, I guarantee you that'll change. Oh. I mean, I have to oh. bargain the fat girl. Chances are she will make you some food with cheap tennis, so it's <laughs> all the you know? Oh, wow. Yeah, I, um... Yeah, I'm just happy all my days of basically doing stuff for cheese is over. So <laughs> I got a wonderful woman. I don't need I don't do I do everything for her for cheese. I'll say that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that as long as, long as it's not funyun cheese. Oh, no, no, not not refined processed cheese. It's got to be well, technically, no, 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 no. You, I take it you don't know what Funyun cheese is. Funyun cheese. I know what Funyuns are. No, Funyun cheese is, is, is not Funyuns. It's, Funyun cheese is when you go to sleep with an itchy ass. With your fingers, what's on your fingers when you go to sleep with an itchy ass? I have learned more about... What, is, <laughs> is that also from the Black Conspiracy Theories thing? I... Nah, man, I actually learned that one summer in Christian camp from the head counselor. Oh, wow. I, yeah, I used to be a Christian. So. You see, I, I'm Jewish, <laughs> that's why I've never heard of funny and cheese. Oh. You know, I, I'd yeah, assume it was... was a very odd place to learn that from the head counselor. Yeah. You know? Now, I'm not going to make any any jokes as to why they called him the head counselor. Okay, of course not. I didn't see, I didn't see any of that, but the whole funny and cheese thing was a little weird. Yeah, it's like when I was in Boy Scouts, um, oh, wow. I, yeah, I, and I became an Eagle Scout, I got through, oh, wow. not molested, but um, my first Scout okay. Master did get arrested for soliciting an underage boy online. Man, you know, you know, you know what's crazy? Me and my, so, so I'm, I'm the father to a, I'm a single dad to a teenage girl. Who, who lives with me, and we love, we love watching to catch a predator, man. We freaking love it. Yep. Just the excuses these guys come up, like the nasty stuff <laughs> they say over the computer, <laughs> and then that just the, the excuses they come up with when they get there and get busted. Yeah. It, you know, and Chris, and Chris Hansen is such an asshole. When he's reading that stuff back to him. <laughs> well. I mean, granted, it's like me, me reading Stephen King to Stephen King. You know, it's like <laughs> holding his own words against him. Yeah, right. And D- he'd probably be mad that you're not using the inflection and emotion of the characters' voices. Yeah, I'm monotone. You know? I'm I'm terrible at voiceover. Yeah, you know, imagine imagine one of the perks Chris Hansen reading is like, nah, man, you gotta say it like this. I'm gonna stick it in your ass. Ooh. You know. Yeah, what what are some other highlights from these bad guys? I I don't watch To Catch a Predator regularly. Oh my god! So you get these guys that you know they they go into chat rooms. I don't know if those still exist. And what what happens is there's these undercover uh, watchdog groups that are dedicated to this stuff. Like the first one they use is Perverted Justice. So they're just adults with nothing better to do. Now, I'm not taking over what to do. I love what they do. But yeah. I can't sit around in the chat room all day pretending to be a 12-year-old girl or 12-year-old boy. And they just wait for adults to contact them. And then that leads to all kinds of nasty conversations which are recorded in transcripts. And then they set up a meeting. Yeah. And the, there's guys that have driven four hours across the state. There's guys that caught like two buses and walked a few miles. And they show up, uh, they walk in, there's a girl who answers the door, and she always goes, Oh, I'm just going to throw something in the laundry. Have a seat, I'll be right back. And that's when Chris Hansen comes out. Hi, have a seat. I can talk to you for a while. Wow. <laughs> and it's like, there were like eight or nine seasons. I'm like, hi, you guys still getting caught. Yeah. <laughs> there's a little girl right there. <laughs> you know, there's guys who came in ass naked. Oh, wow. Um, what, there were at least two guys that came in and asked me. I mean, how bad would it be if you were just, you know, working your FedEx delivery route? You just were dropping off maybe some, uh, you know, something ordered from Amazon, and then Chris Hansen's like, hey, have a seat. <laughs> right. Well, he actually, uh, 
he actually caught a guy that he rode the train with and talked to every day. Oh, now, that's wow. the one I don't get. Yeah. <laughs> and this is like after To Catch a Predator was over. They already did their eight or nine seasons. And then he started a new show called Hanson vs. Predator. And he, he freaking knew the guy. And there was even another guy who got, there were two guys who got caught twice. Oh, wow. And it's like, as soon as they walk out the house, the police are right there waiting to arrest them. And these guys cry. I mean, one guy showed up with his son. What? <laughs> what? Wow. Yeah, I, and I don't mean his his adult son, the tag team. No, this dude, he, he had his three-year-old son with him. Oh. Um, and he was trying to meet a 12-year-old boy. And then Chris Hansen came out and said, look, man, I know why you're here. You know why you're here. I'm not going to do this because you have your son, but you need to go. And the guy goes, Okay, but I was the only, he was like, just go. And dude went out, and this was a big, burly, like, strong man looking dude. And when those cops snatched him and grabbed his son, this dude was in the police car just crying. Oh, my son. Oh, wow. And, and I did my research on it. It turns out that uh, his wife stayed with him. And they, so they lost custody. Of, they had to give up custody of their son. Wow, that's, yeah, I... I'll be honest, if my partner was on national TV, right, you know, and got caught, <laughs> all this... Right, trying to, get his, trying to get his tickle pickled by a kid, like, yeah. you know, I... Well, let, let, where would these chat rooms be? Who still goes in a chat room? I, I would just assume everybody's trying to catch me as a pedophile if I've ever found a chat room. <laughs> right. I mean, here's the thing. A lot of these guys could be the case if they don't do a couple of things. Like, um, a lot of these guys send dick pics or just pictures of them just sitting down butt-ass naked. Ugh. So, that... that you're done because that's a felony alone you know and there's been a couple guys who were very vague with their conversations and then showed up and then when chris hansen busted them he did they didn't they didn't they didn't talk they were like nope that's not what i did and you know a couple guys actually beat it but a lot of other people are like oh man once he starts reading the transcript okay you got me yeah i was going to you know and then it's like well you're already convicted yep I remember watching an episode of Cops, and they had a prostitution sting. And I remember this one guy, all he wanted was a spanking. You know, no sex, no, no nudity, He's just like, hey, f female who I don't know, don't know as a cop, I just want a spanking. Now, I think this guy could uh, technically get, o get off Scott Clean, pardon the phrasing, yeah. but just like... You know, spanking, it's another form of massage. You know, I'm just paying for a massage. Damn, that's real deep tissue. Yeah, that's... Uh, but most of them were just like, yeah, I'll, I want to have sex for money. And that was just like, okay, money's exchanged, cops busted. Wow. But this one guy, I think, he was given a bad rap. He just wanted a spanking. I mean, I'm not going to say he's a perv with morals, but, I mean, yeah, that, 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 wasn't, that wasn't for sex, per se. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure he probably, he probably nutted all over himself, you know, when he gets spanked, but still. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's just a side effect. It's not a direct cause. <laughs> I was watching Cops once, uh, many, many, many years ago on the East Coast, and, you know, Oh man, this is gonna sound. This is a, man. This sounds like a scene from a movie, but it happened. We're watching cops, and some one dude is just getting his ass whooped. And then, because we weren't really paying attention to it, and then I see my boy look up, and he goes, "Hey yo, that's my father." And I what? We're like, "What?" And we thought he was we, he was playing. Nah, he was for real. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is father got his ass whooped on cops. Oh, man, I've never been in that situation. <laughs> I mean, all my friends, they were like sons of dentists and accountants. So, uh, you know. Oh, wow. Jewish suburbs. <laughs> I've, I've definitely got my ass whooped by the cops for no, for no damn reason. 
I, uh... They said, they said I broke into my own house. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I got... This is the different worlds we come in from. When I first got my driver's license, I was going 80 in the oncoming lane. I got a racing ticket, and I got a lawyer, and it knocked it down to speeding 10 to 20. Wow. So Just under reckless endangerment, which is what you, what you should have got in the first place. Yeah. But, and, and I got pulled over for not stopping at a yield sign. Jesus. So, yeah. Yeah, polar opposites. It's ridiculous. I, you know, I, I would love for you just to be in my world for one day, just to, uh, just to, you know, have like a vacation day, just like oh, they're looking oh, at me because they expect me to buy something. Hell yeah, life would just be wonderful. I freaking wake up, birds chirping, you know, go to Starbucks. You'd carry an umbrella. <laughs> Check check my uh, credit karma.com. Oh, still eight fifty. <laughs> <laughs> then wearing... I get home to have sex with a girl and look at look at my dick and start crying. Exactly. Oh! Hey, hey, I'm... <laughs> I'm just saying for the top head and monocle, it'd be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be you'd be carrying an umbrella, swinging from streetlights, to singing. <laughs> That's my world every day. Yeah. Every every day for me is a 1950s uh, Disney movie starring Dick Van Dyke. Oh, wow. However, you'd have to go through the 30s and 40s, which wasn't that good for Jews, I just want to say. I concur. Yeah. You know, I I would trade my my background for, or your background for mine in the 30s and 40s. Just throwing it out there. And, 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 and I would decline such a trade. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've, done, I've done my study, and I saw Escape to Book. They made us watch Escape to Sobibor. Escape from Sobibor. I yeah. think my sophomore year of high school. And I'm like, why, why? Why do we have to see this? This isn't cool. Yeah, well. Well, it's, uh, at, you know, it's whatever background we come from and they both suck compared to just a normal Christian white man. So we got that going for us. Hey, there you go. <laughs> so changed gears a bit. Uh, you mentioned your uh, teenage daughter. Uh, how's the homeschooling going? Uh, you know what? It's pretty good because she, I mean, she just has her Zoom meetings and then she does the work. And I mean, the answer, every answer is there in the book with the exception of math. So, yeah, she's maintaining her grades. You know, her core classes are all A's and B's. Oh, that's good. Because yeah. yeah. I got some young uh, nieces, and I decided to help out. Because, cause, uh, you know, they're doing strictly homeschooling through this, because Wisconsin school districts are different. And um, I decided to be a substitute for them one day. And uh, after the first day, I was like, I think we could cash in the college funds right now. You know, <laughs> let's uh, wow. let's teach some welding. You know, they're going to a trade home school. <laughs> they're going to a what? A trade home school. You know, be, learn to be a carpenter. <laughs> yeah, I was like a trade. Wow. <laughs> uh, so. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, the important thing is you got to teach her how to do taxes early. <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know, but I'm going to, I've always had a plan. I'm going to teach my kids what I wanted to learn in high school. Like, by age 10, they're going to know how to change the oil on everything, whether it's from, you know, they'll know so much about oil that they'll go pro, like, eight, right out of high school. Whether it's oil changes in the car, oil on the grill, oil, everything. Yeah. Oh. Definitely that. Age 18, how to pack and pack a bowl and roll a blunt. Oh my god, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Son, go roll me up a little something, something. 
Yeah. And if it doesn't have a filter, you're out of the house. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, I always thought I'd be the, I'd always be the parent who would teach the life skills, but it's different planning than when you actually have a kid, because you're so tired, you're like, man, figure it out on, for yourself. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I really can't talk on that. Yeah. So, uh, begin... Yeah, Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, well, to sort of begin to wrap stuff up, what are your plans uh, post, um, post-quarantine? post I, I know you started to get into some of the acting stuff. What are what are some things you really want to dive headfirst into as soon as it's safe to go out? Yeah, I really want to get back to one of the auditions. Uh, you know, so I've done a few commercials uh, in the last year, but the goal was to get theatrical um i i just wrapped a couple short films and then i had just landed a role as the lead in another film so i was really excited to get that footage together so i can submit it to be a theatrical uh to get a theatrical agent so that's my main goal oh definitely and, and hopefully you know hopefully make, and for the first time in two years go on a date i just hate to get there and she asked me to have a seat and i hear hi i'm chris hansen <laughs> <laughs> Hey, always ask the age first. That's the first question. They say it's yeah, rude. What if you were dyslexic, though? Like, she said 13, but you saw 31. Well, I would avoid the I would avoid the number one. I, I would only, you know, I'd only, Actually, I'd only date 22-year-old, 33-year-olds, or 44-year-olds in that case. <laughs> I actually got out of a ticket for telling a cop. Well, I got I, I got out of the ticket I should have gotten or arrested for telling the cop I was dyslexic. Oh, nice. Uh. <laughs> I, I I would do that, but um, I never get pulled over. I'm about to say you wouldn't have to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you told, I you told him you tell him you're dyslexic. He's gonna hand you a few pamphlets. <laughs> we'll get through this. Yeah. We'll get it, through this. He'll say, Let, <laughs> "Let's go down to the station. We'll uh." <laughs> we'll overcome this together. <laughs> right. You know, and it's funny because, you know, I'll be on the 605 or something and I'll catch myself going 85. And I'm like, this is total white privilege right here. I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to slow down to 75 and just relax for a bit. <laughs> right. <laughs> I tell people all the time out here, I'm like, yo, if you're doing 65 or 70, you are you better be in the slow lane out here. Oh, Nobody yeah. drives that fast. I'm like, okay, cops will pull you over for not going that fast. Yeah, I, I remember I, one of my favorite things to do is watch police chases on Twitter because they're live and there's a few great ones. Um, <clears throat> and there was one just, uh, just on the 605 and it was... They're like, this guy's going 85, 90. And I was like, I went faster to that, than that guy on that road hours ago. <laughs> it's. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, I don't. I try not to speak, man. So, uh, LAPD, my first day out here, they pulled me over. Yep. Because someone walked in a crosswalk as I was driving through it. And I'm like, so you pulled me over instead of the guy that was jaywalking? My light was green. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Although I uh, sometimes one of the weirdest experiences I've had driving, uh, and this was back in the Midwest. I was I was driving through uh, where was that um, East? Oh, okay, so it's next to Chicago and the in the um, Indiana border, and this is gonna really tick me up, Gary, Indiana. So, I was Michael driving, Jackson. yeah, Michael Jackson, Glenn Robinson, it's a city that's 90% black, and I, this is my memory of it, I was driving through it, I looked out, and all I saw was huge industrial pipes next to the highway for miles, literally blocks and blocks of huge industrial pipes, so I pull off the highway in Gary, Indiana, Pull into a gas station to fill my tank because I was driving from Milwaukee to uh, Central Ohio. Um, <clears throat> so as I was filling my tank, 
the clerk, the gas station clerk, came out and said, what the hell are you doing? And I was like, I'm just filling my tank. And he was like, okay, for your own safety, as soon as you're done with filling your tank, get in your car and get back on the highway as fast as possible. You'll, <coughs> you don't want to be here around dark. And I was like, oh, wow. That's scary wow. Indiana. <laughs> oh wow! And uh, <laughs> to this day, like I've been, I've been, like I've been south of downtown Washington, Vernon. I've been to uh, you know some of the lesser parts of Santa Ana. There's no place scarier in the L.A. area than Gary, Indiana. Really? Yeah. There's. Like, first of all, Compton, Long Beach, a lot of these places really do get a bad rap. You know, the people are there are really nice. The food's amazing. And um, it just just happens to be a place where 20 years ago it was gang wars. But <laughs> Gary... Yeah, they're not as bad now. Yeah. Right. I haven't heard too many good things about Gary, Indiana. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, wow. That, now I'm gonna throw the question to you. Where was the scariest place you've ever been? Shoot, scariest. I've been in some bad places. I'm, you know, I'm from DC. Yeah. So, um, man, no. you know what? Philly was pretty bad, man. Philly was pretty bad when I went up there. Cause I mean, I lived in New York. Uh, yeah, New York was bad. I think Philly, Philly might 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 have edged out Baltimore and almost became a cop in Baltimore. Yeah, Philly, man. Yeah. Although yeah, I did, was... la I did laugh because uh, we both lived in Seattle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> some people said, "Hey, don't go in this neighborhood. It's, you know, it's pretty bad." And you drive through there, and there'd be white people jogging. I'm like, "No, this, this isn't bad. <laughs> this is nowhere near bad." Yeah, you should see you should see the ghetto over here in, in your PV, Palos Verdes. They're like, yeah, that's that's a ghetto over there, and I'm like, really? That would that would be a luxury apartment where I'm from. Okay. And the funny thing is, you know, Palos Verdes. They say it's you know some of that area is ghetto, but it's like the rents are too grand for a one bedroom. Right. It doesn't matter what the property is if you if you're trying to buy it. I'm like, it's going to be a million plus. Yeah. You can get a, a fixer-upper for a million. Yeah, I mean, Gary, Indiana, for two grand, you could buy four plots of land in, like, a <laughs> mill. I was say, you could probably be mayor of the city for two grand. <laughs> Definitely. Well, I mean, the mayor of the city, you got to beat some drug lords to be the mayor, so. <laughs> Final boss. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you're still level two. You got to work your way to level fifteen before you even think about competing for government spots. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I'm Titus. On my list of places not to go. Eh, definitely hit up Chicago. Don't hit up uh, Gary. I lived out there. I lived out there. I did not like it. Too cold. Yeah. Yep. I did hang. I did hang a lot in Wisconsin. Yep. Uh, and I tell everybody back home, you don't have to shovel sunshine. That's why I'm out here. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, I what... appreciate you having me, man. Hey, always great talking to you. I've always enjoyed hanging out with you, and let's definitely get together when we're able to. No problem, for sure. And, uh, my, yeah, my IG, at Titus 2.0. At Titus 2.0. If I had Instagram, I'd be your next sub follower. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thanks for watching Hunkered, Hunkered Down with Seth. Definitely check out Titus Ricard's everything, whatever you need. He's your guy. Take care, guys. <laughs>